yeah, what is the evidence of endoscopic treatment? Firstly, we have to consider that patients can have a variety of symptoms, not only dysphagia, which can be graded using different type of scores, but some suffer more from regurgitation, cough and aspiration. And you should keep that in mind when you try to interpret the results of study reporting on clinical success, because it's quite difficult to grade the type of symptoms. The endoscopic treatment has a long history. So the conventional endoscopic myotomy was introduced in 1995 uh, by using needle knife or APC. And the submucosal dissection technique was already reported in 2014 by Kadir. Now, in terms of the traditional endoscopic septotomy, as was nicely shown by Stefan Siewald, we have a variety of techniques. So type of anesthesia, some do it under general anesthesia, but it can be undoubtedly also used uh, under deep sedation with propofol. You can use additional devices, uh, the diverticuloscope, as shown before, cap nasogastric tube to protect the esophageal lumen. You can use different type of cutting devices, knife, hot forceps, scissors, APC, and as we already discussed, uh, the use of clips is also not mandatory, so it depends also at the discretion of the endoscopist. Of course, these variants may have also an impact on the clinical results, uh, but there are no comparative trial, uh, trials, so we don't know which is the real impact on the data. A systematic review, a meta-analysis on 20 studies, including more than 800 patients, involved uh, centers which included 10 up to 115 cases per study. And uh, interestingly, the study design showed no randomized controlled trial, five prospective cohort studies, 15 retrospective design, or even not mentioned. The study design was not mentioned. And in terms of the interpretation of clinical results, as I already emphasized, very difficult to interpret. So only in six studies, all symptoms were finally graded. In six, only dysphagia. In eight, no grading at all. So probably it was just asked, uh, did you improve? And the results of uh, this meta-analysis showed uh, excellent data, treatment success 91% adverse events in 11%, so it seems to be safe, uh, usually minor adverse events, and recurrent rates, uh, 11%, so relatively low, uh, in based on a mean follow-up period between 7 and 42 months, so relatively short in most of the studies. But again, there's a substantial heterogeneity across studies. I would like to refer to two larger series uh, from Jacques de Vier's group in Brussels. 150 patients, single center trial, clinical success at one month, 90%. Adverse events in this highly uh, experienced center, 2.2%. And the dysphagia score dropped significantly, so they graded dysphagia. And I think what they reported on the symptoms recurrence rate, this is more closer to the truth, 23%. And 23%, uh, 23 cases underwent a second treatment and only five a third treatment. A longer follow-up compared to many other studies, on average median uh, follow-up 43 months. And a trial from Costa Mania's group, 89 patients, a prospective database, 100% technical success rate, also low rate of adverse events, and clinical success quite comparable to the data from Brussels. So at uh, 48 months, every second patient had uh, recurrent symptoms, and they analyzed variables for recurrences. I cannot go into details, but according to the discussion in this paper, the best candidates for traditional endoscopic septotomy are those with a diverticulum size between three and five centimeters. So the larger one and the very small one have a higher rate of recurrences. However, we have to 
emphasize that treatment of recurrence is very easy. So this uh, is just a picture uh, showing uh, this scar here at the bottom. So we have again a small septum 13 months after a so-called complete traditional septotomy. And this takes less than 10 minutes just to cut again uh, with a needle knife. So as we have already heard, Z-POEM has uh, potential advantages, complete visualization of the septum, limitless death of septotomy, and as it was mentioned by Haru Inoue, it may be even safer because the closure of the mucosa entry is uh, quite secure. On the other hand, it's more time consuming and general anesthesia is what we think, at least for those who have uh, limited experience, usually be quiet. Because when patients start uh, to aspirate, you flush, you have a bleeding, uh, a patient is moving uh, during uh, procedures just under proper fault sedation, you may really have uh, problems. So what about the data on Z-POEM? Uh, this is a multi-center international retrospective study. Uh, therefore, of course, the level of evidence is quite uh, limited. 75 patients, uh, technical success rate 97%, mean procedure time around one hour. Adverse events quite comparable uh, to traditional septotomy. A clinical success rate very high, 92%, but the median follow mean follow-up is uh, less than one year, so it's relatively short. So recurrences may be rare. However, we need more prospective data. And then Alessandro Repici, uh, Repici reported an uh, important uh, study in selected patients with a small diverticulum. Uh, and I've mentioned before they may especially benefit because it's more risky to do a complete septotomy in a small diverticulum. Excellent results, technical success rate, and they are very fast, very experienced center, 14 minutes mean procedure time. And interestingly, these patients were treated under, under deep sedation, no adverse events, also high clinical success rate, 95%, no recurrences, uh, but the mean follow-up is still uh, limited to 12 months. Uh, just published in, in this current uh, issue of um, endoscopy retrospective study in patients with re recurrence after Zenka's diverticulum treatment, 32 cases. And as you can see, prior interventions, open surgery, rigid, flexible endoscopy, even Z-POEM, so there are often obviously uh, recurrences in Botox injection. So the data show it can be also used in case of failure of other techniques. Excellent results, clinical success again over 90%. Adverse events a little bit higher, that also case of uh, perforation. And uh, clinical results, uh, dysphagia score dropped, median follow-up quite short. So I would like to conclude. I think there is no doubt that the endoscopic treatment is a first-line therapy for symptomatic Zenkas diverticulum because it's effective, minimally invasive, and safe. It's applicable even in case of a difficult anatomy because with a flexible endoscope, we can easily approach a septum at uh, all directions. Promising long-term results, recurrences can be retreated, and we have to consider that, and patients have to be informed that this can be seen in 20 to 30% after traditional septotomy. z -POM promises less recurrences, in particular for small ZD. However, uh, there is a lack of comparative trials, and uh, all of these, uh, in spite of the long history of endoscopic treatment, the level of evidence is still low, but uh, strong recommendations for endoscopy. Thank you very much, uh, Horst, for this excellent overview. Uh, a couple of questions. Um, if it's so difficult to evaluate outcome of treatment because of symptoms of the patient, um, then uh, isn't the indication for treatment also a little bit at stake? A lot of these patients have a diverticulum, um, and uh, do we need do we need a motility workup of these patients, or are we simply accepting any symptoms that we find in any patient that has a Zenker's diverticulum? Uh, Stefan, what do you what do you feel about this? Are we are we sometimes over treating patients 
that do not really have symptoms from those anchors, or are we actually seeing residual symptoms that have nothing to do with the Zankers diverticulum but with an underlying motility disorder? So what we are doing with our patients, they come all back after six months, and um, the first question is, do you have any dysphagia? And uh, I think uh, about 80% uh, of the patients are happy with the result. Then you go in and you still see a small septum and you see also some remaining fluid in the diverticulum. So in such a situation, I think um, we should always follow the symptoms of the patient. So it is not really necessary when a patient has no symptoms um, that um, he needs again a treatment. And uh, on the other hand, when you have situations where you think you have a successful uh, endoscopic treatment done and patient has still symptoms, then I think uh, other examinations, diagnostic like motility examinations uh, should be done in order to check what's the real problem. So not any residual symptom the patient has is actually, may actually be related to the Zenker's diverticulum. That's, I think, one of the pitfalls. I think Horst explicitly said that you should do Z poem at least he does it under general anesthesia. And although we, we now see studies coming out that it can be done under proper full sedation, likely these studies all come from very experienced centers. Uh, but as Horst is saying, if you get into trouble, you really are in trouble if there's no tube in the patient's airway. Hmm. Would, you, would you agree on that? So I would never, we never do a Z poem without general anesthesia. Um, on the other hand, I also have to note then in, that in many countries the regular approach has to be done with general anesthesia because of the conditions and I think we have to rethink a little bit about our resources. So um, for sure when we do an ESD or a POEM or a Z POEM, then we need uh, an anesthesiologist um, and intubation. Mm -hmm. But uh, in the other approach, it is not really uh, necessary. And I think this is also a take home message. I think for the regular septotomy using a needle knife, if you use the overtube, a general intubation is not necessary. Yeah, and then even if you accept a 20% recurrence rate and if retreatment only takes you five minutes, or 10 minutes, both procedures without general anesthesia, it largely depends on your local setup. If you're moving in, if you already have general anesthesia, then ZPOA may be a logical thing to move into, especially if you're also doing achalasia. But if you don't have a, a, a POEM background or an ESD background, and you're doing your Zenkers under uh, deep sedation without intubation, then moving to ZPOEM is probably only will get you risk and little additional benefit, right? I think you're right, and I think one discussion is also um, why don't, sh so the discussion or the argument was always ZPOEM should be done in small diverticles. Why not in a large one? This is also an open question. And somehow I think the future will s uh, tell us the precise indications. But I think, um, as Horst also mentioned, when you have a small diverticulum, um, it's not very comfortable to place uh, the overtube and to do the classical approach. I think these patients who really have symptoms, and uh, you can also show in the x-ray that there is remaining fluid in the diverticulum, these are the specific candidates for a Z poem intervention. But I think for sure we need studies, and uh, the current study situation is uh, not uh, very much um, acceptable.